Chip Dunn is a co-founder, a chairman, and an investor in a company called Anovian. I don't know a lot about it. I do know you are making synthetic graphite, and I'm really curious, how'd you get this company started? Well, thanks, John, for having me. Uh, listen, I think we all, every one of us probably grows up as little kids who wanted to make synthetic graphite, right? I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't even know what this was yeah, right. you know, not that long ago. But no, but uh, synthetic graphite, as it turns out, graphite is 30% of the battery. Uh, and so synthetic graphite is just doing in, in, a, in 30 days what the Earth does in 5 million years. So the, the graphite's used what, in the anode of the it, battery, it, 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 right? It's actually about 95 to 98% of the anode. Okay. And, and so it's a critical part around, around all the things that U.S. consumers care the most about, whether it be you know, how far we can drive, how fast we can charge. And so the, the anode's what's, what's really helping us get there, and, and graphite is the key material you know, in a lithium ion battery. But right now, China's got a lock on all graphite production, right? Oh, chi China has, I mean, I think if you look at a lot of the market shares, it's at least 90% of the production capacity of, of, of synthetic graphite, about 70 to 80% or more of natural graphite. And, uh, and so China is just dominating this, and they have for, for 30 years as they've been building out that supply chain. This is our chance now to be building out the local, you know, more regional supply chain for America, bringing great jobs back to America and, and building out a supply chain for our, our electric vehicle and uh, lithium ion battery business. Well, I'll, I'll confess, I know nothing about this. How do you make synthetic graphite? Well, the, this, is the, this is the great irony, is that today, you know, the anode, uh, the, the graphite that we use in the anode, the, 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 the best material that we can use happens to be fossil fuel based. It just happens to be the, effectively a waste product of the, of the fossil fuel process, refining process. So we buy petroleum coke, and we use that petroleum coke and convert it in the course of about 10 or 15 steps into material that's 99.99% pure graphite. So battery ready. Battery ready, we are the, actually today we are the only North American capacity uh, for to make anode grade synthetic graphite uh, at a commercial scale. We already have you know, trucks on the ground and satellites in the sky, and we're really excited about being part of this whole energy transition story. Where's the company base? Where are you making yeah, this? Yeah, so, uh, so headquartered in, in the Midwest in Chicago right now, but our, our, and our, our, our current facilities are a combination of, of assets that we have in West Virginia and in, outside Niagara Falls, which is a, a, where our predecessor companies kind of came together. Uh, but our long-term vision includes three expansion plants of, of real scale. Our first one's going to be in Bainbridge, Georgia, southwestern Georgia, great quail country, uh, and about 45 minutes north of Tallahassee. Uh, and we're really excited about being part of that whole climate tech uh, corridor that's, that's being built up in the southeastern U.S. Your timing couldn't be better, obviously, with this move to EVs and the IRA money. There's got to be incentives for you in that, I would think. So, so the IRA is really interesting for us, and, and what's great is that we actually predate both the bipartisan infrastructure bill in 2021 and the IRA in 2022. Uh, and, and all this legislation has been really helpful. And, and really what it's doing collectively is accelerating what otherwise was gonna take 30 years to happen. It's, it's trying to get it done in seven. And so for us and for our customers, you know, uh, which are the battery makers and to a lesser extent the OEMs, uh, we are working directly you know, arm in arm with them to create uh, next generation you know, batteries that can qualify for all these incentives that are you know, baked into the uh, the various legislation. But this goes beyond automotive, right? I Absolutely. Mean, they're, 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 so what else? Yeah, no, so we got auto, we got automotive customers that in our pipeline. We have ESS, or electric storage system customers in our pipeline, grid storage. Uh, we have medical devices. We have military defense and defense uh, you know, applications. We have, you know, the, 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 the lithium battery, as you probably you might remember, you know, 30 years ago, is in our, we all wanted our Walkman. You know, uh, and, and the only thing that had a lithium ion battery and it seemed to have that be that Sony Walkman. Now we've got it in everything. And, and so we're really excited about being part of this whole story. So, I mean, you're up and running already. Yeah. You, you know, so if I were an OEM, I could buy synthetic graphite. Absolutely, we have, we have products right now. In fact, it's, it's a really attractive, uh, environmentally friendlier product than what's being done in, in China right now. Uh, it's probably about 60% less carbon intensive. How so? How, how do you get in that? So, so we, our production process just you know uses slightly different uh, methodologies versus the Chinese, and our performance, our, our characteristics are substantially similar. So we can create uh, you know a much more friendly, uh, or especially over the longer term as we as we refine that process, but a uh, much friendlier you know decarbonization story that versus our Chinese incumbents, and really make this not just about beating China and, and reshoring jobs and, and creating this great supply chain 
but also about making it, doing it you know, right by the environment as well. So here at this, uh, the, the battery show, they had a speaker from the Department of Energy. I'm told after his speech was done, he made a beeline for your booth here. He did. I, would you believe I actually missed him? I, I, was, I literally was like walking, like, it's, it's such a maze here. There's so much, there's so much activity, but I'm hoping he, he, he stops by again after this. Yeah, so you've got the eye of the DOE and others. So we so we were so fortunate last fall to get uh, to be awarded a $117 million grant from the DOE program. And we're obviously using that now as part of our capitalization along with some investor money uh, as we as we work through the qualification process for all these customers. And uh, and so that DOE funding, the, the government funding, is really critical in what we're trying to do longer, both in the near term and in the longer term. Okay, all good story. What am I missing? Anything else you should add? I mean, I, what I love about this is more than anything is, is we talked a little bit about this, it's, it's we're American owned, we're American made, we're building out a, a domestic supply chain from, from, from refinery, to, you know, uh, source product all the way to the end customer, and we're really excited about being part of this whole whole transition. So I know a, a lot of the people watching this are going to go, wait a minute, is this a publicly traded company? How do I get <laughs> into the action? Not yet. Okay, maybe. <laughs> uh, but at uh, but some point, I mean, we're, we're, we're really fortunate to have a great long-term investors who are focused not on just growth, but, but focused on building businesses for the long term. And so all the capital that's come in to, to date, including my own capital, really focus on 10, 15, 20 year kind of investments. And so we, at some point, we'll be thinking about public markets, but we're not quite there yet. Gotcha. Chip, thanks so much John, for the time. John, thanks so much for the Interesting. Everything. Thanks. Very good. Cheers. Sure, sure.